Houston Station on 2. I'm not hearing anything. We don't either, Tom. We're troubleshooting. The North Carolina native joining us from the International Space Station. Hey, Mr. Marshburn, can you hear me? Ken Smith at WRL Marshburn. Ken Smith at WRL Marshburn, can you hear me? Yes, Ken, I can hear Yes, I can, loud and clear. How me? I've got you loud and clear. How do you read me? Mr. Marshburn, Ken Smith of the WRL Newsroom in Raleigh. Looking forward to talking with you. Can you hear me? Looking forward to talking with you. Can you hear me? Yes, I've got you loud and clear. Can you read me? Test, test. I've got you loud and clear, Ken. My glasses right here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mr. Marshburn, Ken Smith at WRL in Raleigh, can you hear me? Ken, I've got you loud and clear. Can you ah. read me? I'm reading you loud and clear. I'm reading you loud and clear. Stand by, we're getting ready to go. Stand by, we're getting ready to go. Four, three, NASA astronaut Tom Marshburn is a North Carolina native, just launching last month to the mission to the International Space Station. He'll be there for about six months conducting research. Mr. Marshburn joins us now from the International Space Station. Good afternoon, sir. And first of all, give us a sense of what that view is like from the International Space Station when you look out the window. Well, I can it's uh, I have to describe it in stages. The first time you look out the window, you see blue and white. You're a bit stunned. You don't know uh, quite what you're looking at. It's so beautiful. You would think you know exactly where you are in the world, but you usually don't the first time you look out the window. You're over an ocean, uh, typically. Uh, but uh, when your brain begins to process uh, the beautiful sights you're seeing, you begin to pick up land masses and such, and then you begin to appreciate just the fact that you are actually traveling over this planet hundreds of miles up inside of this space station that is not tethered to anything. It is just floating and traveling at five miles a second over the Earth, and uh, it's it's there quite a lot to take that in and over time you begin to fall in love with your planet you see the beauty you begin to recognize continents and uh, landforms right away and you begin to appreciate uh, a, a bit of our place on the planet as we mentioned you're a north carolina native what sparked your interest in space well i was uh, living on davy avenue there in statesville and uh, we took a family trip to the movie theater and saw 2001 A Space Odyssey right when it came out. That uh, somewhat terrified me as a young child, but it uh, certainly engendered a lot of interest in space. And it wasn't until after we moved away and I was in high school that I began to read about the Apollo program, what uh, astronauts, flight controllers, engineers had done to put us on the moon, and then seeing Neil Armstrong walk on the moon. I was hooked at that point. I wanted to have something to do with space. Uh, hopefully I could work for NASA someday, and that was my goal. So uh, we mentioned that uh, this is your third space flight. Have you noticed any advancements this time around compared to your first two missions? Oh, absolutely. Uh, the space station is larger. We've got a whole new science module on the Russian side and a docking port added on over there. What has struck me from the moment I arrived on this trip was the added complexity. 
uh, to all of the laboratories, all the modules, just about our, our labs. There are so many more experiments. The, uh, uh, the scope of the experiments is so much more broad. And the, uh, the, the depth of the, the science that we're doing, what we're learning about physiology and basic physics up here, uh, as well as uh, more um, uh, practical uh, things in the sense of the things that, that could be uh, uh, used uh, right away from the space station, those are uh, so much more than the last time I was up here. We are working really hard to get it all done. It's very exciting. All right, we've got about 20 seconds. How long does it take your body to adjust to zero gravity? I would say it takes the body itself and the, the plumbing and everything about uh, two weeks. It takes the brain four to six weeks to kind of catch up and get used to the pace, used to being able to control your, your body movements as well as to do the work. And then you be really become a, a master of working up here, working in three dimensions all the time after a couple of months, I'd say. Mr. Marshburn, thank you for your time today. All the best on the International Space Station. Hey, Ken, so good to talk to you. Thank you. All right. Tom Marshburn, as we mentioned, he's a North Carolina native. He launched last month in November. Station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the WRAL-TV portion of the event. Please stand by for a voice check from the Charlotte Observer. Hello, Space Station, can you hear me? Hello, uh, this is Tom Marshman on the Space Station. I read you loud and clear. How me? Hi, Tom. How are you? I'm doing great this Friday. How are you doing? Wonderful, Tom. Um, Tom, I was hoping, uh, what types of experiments have you been working on and, uh, and the crew uh, on this particular mission that you might want to let, let the America know about and everyone else? Well, so far I've been deeply involved as the subject of, of experiments. We've been looking at uh, muscle atrophy, ways of measuring the muscle that we can do here in zero G that uh, will possibly benefit people who need to have their muscles evaluated. Uh, instead of having to have a muscle biopsy, we can use some of the instrument, instrumentation that's been developed for our work up here. But in particular, what interests me as a physician is our bodies in space age at a very rapid pace. There's some aspects of aging that occur very quickly up here in space. Atrophy, I mentioned bone um, atrophy, osteoporosis. Our eyes change, our eyesight changes. Uh, the radiation can age our vessels, our blood vessels as well. So we are perfect little uh, test subjects for evaluating ways to combat that and uh, looking at what exactly is the, uh, the process that causes these things so that we can develop uh, ways of treating and preventing it. And it's not only for people as they age, it's also for people in ICUs or, or undergoing rehabilitation. Um, these are all, all things that we've been looking at. I've uh, been using ultrasound, been using the, uh, um, some muscle uh, new muscle evaluation devices I've talked about. And we've only been up here five weeks. so. Um, we're looking forward to all the other things. There's uh, many more categories of science that are constantly going on around us that we are helping maintain. Fluid physics, astronomy, Earth observations, uh, all happening in the racks around me, but also on the outside of the space station. Tom, what would you like people to know about why it is critical that we continue to be in space, on the space station, with other countries, but why is it critical that we be there? Well, the um, immediate answer is what we are finding out while we're here. We're not only finding out uh, things about human beings, uh, basic physics, uh, more engineering uh, type of solutions to problems. We're also developing new devices that are going to help us go to the uh, moon and stay at the moon and to go on to Mars. These are uh, advancements in materials and advancements in propulsion, engineering power. Um, water reclamation, all things that uh, have a huge impact to people on Earth. 
Beyond that, though, we're up here with our Russian cosmonauts. We're uh, getting along just fantastic because we are all out here for each other. We are, rely on each other for our safety and to survive. And our goal is to explore space. Uh, I believe the international co cooperation, one of my crewmates is an uh, ESA astronaut from Germany. Um, all of our cooperation together, I think, speaks very well for what humans can do when we explore together. Uh, I, for one, love living in a country that is a leading spacefaring nation. One day we will need to take care of and perhaps leave this planet, and we are just taking the very first steps for being able to accomplish that. And what, what do you miss about Earth? What can't you wait to uh, get back to? I would say in order, of course, my wife and my daughter and friends and family, then a hot shower and then a club sandwich, something that is fresh and crunchy that I can't eat up here and uh, with ingredients that come out of a refrigerator. That would be wonderful. Then after that, I'd probably get involved with water somehow. I want to be standing out under the rain or go swimming, uh, something like that. What, what do you think about when you look out at Earth? What do you think about as far as Earth and about space? Well, that's a, a great question because, yeah, we are spending a lot of time looking at the Earth, but the blackness of space is right there uh, on the other side. All you have to do is turn around. So the, uh, at first you're stunned when you see the Earth. It's so beautiful and it's so hard for your brain to take it in. It doesn't look like an atlas. Uh, you see clouds and water, and then eventually you start to see landforms, and you get a feeling, uh, once you just get over the beauty of it, that uh, the human, human species is a very fragile, very tiny um, entity living on the surface of the planet. It almost seems like the Earth could shrug us off at, at any moment, particularly when you look at the blackness of space. It is a deep, palpable blackness. It's not like something that's just um, yeah, painted on, for instance. So um, it, it sends a chill through you, in a way, just how vast it is. And in some ways, we seem very alone, but in the same way, it makes us, uh, us humans seem incredibly precious. So you see blackness. Do you see, do you think that there has to be life out there, other life, maybe superior to us, maybe inferior, maybe superior to, us? to us, maybe yeah. inferior to us? Well, I tell you, it's, uh, we think about that a lot at NASA. I think a lot of people think about that. There's nothing that I see that would inform me one way or one way or the other. Um, when our eyes adapt and we can see stars, much like on a on a crystal clear night on the Earth on a mountaintop at night, uh, and you can see just get a glimpse of how large this universe is, I would say that statistically there probably is. Uh, the more uh, life outside um, our solar system, even um, this is we. Every time we look at another star, it seems that we are finding planets around it. So, uh, just looking at the math, I'd say there's a good chance. Final question, if I still have time. Um, what has been your favorite part of this mission and, and past missions, and has there been any uh, particular challenge this time? The favorite part is the people I get a chance to fly with. Even though looking at the Earth and living in zero-G is special, when you share it with uh, crewmates, and I've been blessed with some wonderful crewmates, especially from uh, all uh, from Germany and from Russia, uh, that is by far the most memorable and, and favorite part of it. Um, the challenges are day-to-day uh, -day work, trying to be as efficient as we can. It's, it's complex work. Uh, the ground control puts together an incredible plan. They have a complex job to do in communicating with them, uh, trying to make sure we implement their plan. That is a big challenge. We just completed a spacewalk about two weeks ago. Getting ready for that was a huge challenge. It was a little bit un unexpected, so we didn't have a lot of time to get ready for it. Um, so every day is different. That makes it incredibly interesting, but also hugely challenging. Uh, just a real quick follow-up to that. What is it like walking in space? <laughs> well, the view you get out the window in the space station, you multiply that by about 100 uh, because you have just your helmet and your visor on. You can feel the, um, 
the heat of the sun a lot more and the, how frigid uh, objects are on the dark side of the Earth. It's about negative 200 degrees on the dark side, about plus 200 uh, the surfaces are on uh, the sunny side. So uh, trying to get the work done with that kind of a view, with uh, all of those environmental factors coming in is uh, tough, but the ch probably the best training we have is getting ready for spacewalks. And you think in, uh, about your training, you can focus in on it, and uh, you can get the work done. But we're pretty tired afterwards. What do you do for relaxation there? I communicate with family is probably the number one thing. We do have the uh, opportunity to talk to, uh, to make a phone call uh, if the satellite alignment is just right. Might do some email, but a quick uh, second after that is going to the window and looking out at the earth and trying to, to see yet more uh, on the surface that we haven't seen before. Thank you, Tom. And when, when do you return? I'm going to be coming back at the end of April for next year uh, with my crewmates, and some of my other crewmates are going to come back a little bit earlier than that, but fortunately we'll be able to invite a new crew and hand over to them, hopefully, uh, at the end of April, and that's where I'll be coming home. So I'll miss winter, but I'm going to come back late spring, and uh, I'll enjoy the summer. Thank you again, Tom. I really appreciate it, um, and thank you so much for talking with us. Thank you, Joe. It's really good to talk to you. Say hi to everyone for me. Thank you, Tom. Station, this is Houston ACR. Thank you. That concludes our event. Thank you to our participants from WRAL-TV and the Charlotte Observer. Station, we are now resuming operational audio communications. <laughs>